Hey folks, Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and I don't really think I need to do an intro bit for this, but it keeps coming up in the various videos I've made about Curse of Strahd revamp, so I wanted to kind of, I, I guess, make something clear that I don't feel is from what I've seen. So a lot of people have said on the comments, like, they're making me go out of my way to spend a whole bunch of extra money for a book or a box that I don't necessarily want to get the most up-to-date rules. Now, while it is true in that video, Chris Perkins did state that this is the most up-to-date version of the rules, those rules are already out there for free for you to just go and use right now. And I, I thought I covered this in a previous video. Maybe I didn't. It's been the updated rules and altered uh, texts for Curse of Strahd to remove insensitivities and all that kind of stuff is already live on Roll20 and D&D Beyond. So if you're just getting those books on those platforms, you would already have the most current rules. So it's not like you necessarily need to go out and buy a new version of the book or wait to buy this 99, now 59.99 version on Amazon. I will point out, and I'll put a link again to it in Amazon, uh, in the Amazon link in my description. I don't know if that'll change as it gets closer to release, but it is currently, at least as of me recording, $59.99 on Amazon. So if you wanted to get the revamped version, that may be the way to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the D&D Beyond website to show you one, something you may not know, but also the printings or, or, or the information. So here we are on, I'll put a link to this article, this D&D Beyond forum post. And you can see right here, it's showcasing if it's highlighted in green, that means it's, it's, it's already been updated. So you can see here, they've got the Curse of Strahd, Tomb of Annihilation, Errata from June, all these various ones from April of 2020, and the various versions since D&D Beyond came into existence. And if you scroll down, they actually showcase all of them and basically what the Errata is as it's given. So there's you know a handful of different things, like the big one for Sword Coast Adventures Guide that I always knew is Winged Tiefling's flight doesn't work with heavy armor. That obviously wasn't the case when it was first released and wasn't that way for almost two years. But anyway, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about Curse of Strahd. So what I'm gonna do uh, for you, once I get down to Curse of Strahd, is I am going to, I have my first edition printing of Curse of Strahd and I'm going to flip to the pages and do my best to compare what we see on screen is the most current, and I'll give you what it was from the book. Okay, so let's go ahead and get down, sorry. Curse of Strahd, okay, chapter one, Mysterious Visitors, page 20. It says, the paragraph before the dancing fire, okay, so, so some of this was um, like just general bookkeeping, you'll see it saying, it'll say change chaotic neutral male human spy to chaotic neutral female human spy and delete chaotic neutral before male and female bandits. So, um, let's see. Uh, yeah. So what it says is, you know, uh, his son Ratka, nine other Vistani, chaotic, chaotic neutral male and female bandits heed Ratka's command. So it's saying, um, change the one, the gender of one of the, uh, the spies is female and delete chaotic neutral before male and female bandits. Okay, that's pretty simple. Uh, then on chapter two, when we're talking about Vistani, it says, replace the first three sentences with the following. Uh, the Vistani, singular Vistana, are wanderers traveling about in horse-drawn barrel-topped wagons, which they build themselves. Compared to Barovians, they are flamboyant, dressed in bright colors, and laughing often. So it says here, uh, originally it says the first three sentences. So it originally read, the Vistani, singular Vistana, are wanderers who live outside civilization, traveling about in horse-drawn, barrel-topped wagons called Vardos, which they built themselves. Compared to Barovians, they are flamboyant, period. Vistani dress in bright colors, laughed often, and drink heartily. As much as they feel at home in Stradgedry land, they, now, uh, they know they can leave it whenever they please and aren't damned to spend eternity there. So it looks like we're basically removing the drink heartily and the reference to Vardos. 
Then on page 27, it says the final paragraph, replace the third and fourth sentences with the following. The Stunny are quick to act when their lives or traditions are threatened and are merciless when, uh, when they believe they must be. So the third and fourth sentences of the, um, in the final paragraph says, uh, they readily tell adventurers that they have a potion that protects them from the deadly fog that surrounds Barovia. Although this is a lie, they attempt to sell their fake potion for as much money as they can get. So they replaced it with that. Then on page 32, replace the first sentence after the box test with the following. These Vistani servants of Strahd march through the Barovian wilderness laughing and telling ghost stories. Um, it says... Where's it? Vistani bandits. Ah... Uh, these evil, it says, these evil Vistani march through the Barovian wilderness without concern for their well-being, well -being, smoking pipes, drinking from wineskins, and telling ghost stories. Now it reads, they march through the wilderness laughing and telling ghost stories. And then in the Tesser, Ser, a pool encampment, um, after the box test, delete both instances of chaotic neutral, okay? Delete both instances of lawful good under Barovian villagers. And I think that's just, um, it just would be, it says, a house of Barovian villagers is home to 1d4 lawful good male and female commoners and 1d8 minus one children, lawful good male and female <coughs> non-combatants. Uh, I don't know if that's just because that's more in line with what the other books say or they're just removing instances of alignment because it's unnecessary. All right, chapter four, page 52. It looks like it's more alignment stuff. Change neutral evil male and female humans to neutral email, evil male and female thugs. Um, that makes sense because thug is a stat block. So human is not a stat block, thug is. In the rest of the paragraph, replace the instances of thugs with Vistani. Um, okay, so where else is that? It says, uh, if the characters leave the castle, the thugs accompany them, it would say the Vistani accompany them. Okay. Then in chapter five, this looks a big one here, page 96 is the start of it. Again, more removal of alignment. On page 97 in St. Andrew's Church, Delete lawful good both times it appears in the third paragraph after the box text, specifically as it pertains to the Balakian adults and children. Father Petrikov and Milovoj uh, should retain their alignments. I guess what they're saying is they're removing alignments, I think, from people that you're not supposed to fight is what I'm gathering. Like, especially like the children, they don't need to have an alignment, I guess. But like if they are someone that you could potentially interact with and has a stat block, they would have an alignment. More alignment renewal. Uh, removal uh, under Rictavio's Carnival Wagon, page 115. It says in the second paragraph after the box chat text change, hunt evil Vistani to hunt Strahd's Vistani servants and delete the sentence that starts with the tiger recognizes. Okay. So Vistani, page 115. Okay. Um, let's see. Where should it say the evil Vistani? Uh, oh, inside the wagon is a saber-toothed tiger with 84 hit points. It is clad in specially fitted half plate and has been trained to hunt evil Vistani, which now reads to hunt Strahd's Vistani servants. And it says, uh, the tiger recognizes Vistani by smell and to a lesser extent by fancy garb they wear. That whole sentence has been removed. Then on page 121, in the paragraph immediately following the box text, uh, replace the sentence, Luvash is so drunk that he has disadvantage on his attack rolls and ability checks with the following. Luvash is the older of the two uh, and the brother whom the Vistani fear the most. Yeah, it says Luvash is so drunk he has disadvantage. Yeah, so they changed it to Luvash is the older of the two and the brother whom the other Vistani uh, fear the most. Uh, in page 122, dealing with Luvash, in the second paragraph, delete the word sober. Um, it says, if an alarm is sounded, nine sober Vistani bandits emerge from three of the surrounding wagons. Um, in Wagon of Sleeping Vistani, it says, uh, each of these wagons contains 1d4 intoxicated and unconscious Vistani. It says, replace that with sleeping, deleting more alignment situations. 
Wagon of Gambling Vistani in the following paragraph. In the paragraph following the box text, delete the words wine and. That is page 123. Um, what is this? Vistani Family Wagon. Oh. Um, it says. The adult is watching the children play games, teaching the children about their heritage, or telling a scary story to frighten them. Um, I don't see anywhere it says that. Oh, delete. Oh, it's Wagon of Gambling Vistani. Where's that? Page 123. Oh, here it is. Um, Vistani, you're playing a dice game for wine and favors. Since they have no monies, they have no no money rather. And it says, in the fa in the paragraph following the box text, delete the words wine and. So, it says they're playing a dice game for favors since they have no money rather than wine and favors. Uh, Victor's workroom. Remove some cantrips. Remove cantrip ray of frost from Casimir's hovel. All right, chapter eight. Delete lawful good all three times it appears in the paragraph before the burgermeister. Delete lawful good again in chapter eight. Haunted One, they finally fixed Haunted One. It used to, if we go to page 209, that is a character option. It was always kind of underpowered because it was choose one of Arcana Investigation, Religion, or Survival, and now it says choose two. And the languages, it has choose one exotic language. It's now choose two, one of which is exotic. And then also gain a set of common clothes and one silver piece. And then lastly, here in Strahd's stat block, it says uh, change unarmed strike vampire form only to unarmed strike vampire or wolf form only. And then the unarmed strike change bludgeoning to slashing, also change bite, batter vampire form to bite. And then in Esmeralda's stat block, it says delete and takes great care to hide it from view. Which, uh, let's see, Esmeralda's secret, it says... Since bidding farewell to Van Richten, Esmeralda has amassed a sizable personal fortune. Um, uh, let's see. As, uh, she commissioned a master artisan to craft a prosthetic lower leg and foot. After several tries, he delivered a prosthesis that restored her mobility. She has since adopted, adapted well to the false appendage and takes great care to hide it from view. And that's where they say, and they just removed it. So that's it. That's all of the changes to Curse of Strahd. Um, that's it. I just read them to you now. They're available for free in the online sources. You could go download those if you want. You could just, if you're going to keep your physical book, you could write them in and scratch out. And that's what I did with my copy of Horde of the Dragon Queen. I actually cut and like built, you know, wrote in the book and fixed the errata because there's some massive changes to Horde of the Dragon Queen and Rise of Teamit compared to what the, pre, uh, the actual book says. Um, so that is it. Uh, I just wanted to make sure I cleared that up because I got the feeling people thought that the only way they were going to get the new rules was going to be if they went and bought this new book. And I thought this might have been released by Wizards of the Coast and an official like errata, but I couldn't find it. Maybe I just didn't look in the right place. Well, realistically, it also shouldn't be that hard to find. Uh, but I know they typically put out a new errata when a new printing of the book comes out. So my guess is we're probably going to get either a new printing of the hardcover right around the time of the revamped launch, or maybe the revamped is the new printing, so then they'll put out the errata. But clearly, they have it because they uploaded it to Roll20 and D&D Beyond currently, so why not just put it out for everybody to have it right now? I mean, like I said, maybe they did, and I just didn't know where it was. Whatever you want, if you want the most up-to-date errata for Curse of Strahd, it's available, link in the description. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you again to my patrons on Patreon for continuing to support the channel. I will see you all next time.